What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 58 of the Sasha T Show. In the show today, guys, I wanted to go over when is the right time to lock in your return on investment? When is the right time to sell your sports cards? Um, I mean, it seems like in the market today, guys, and, and how the market of sports cards has been going, you know, these last several months, everything in the card world has essentially gained value. Something you, you could have bought, you know, a card, you know, a month ago, now it's worth 500 bucks now. Um, that's not uncommon in today's market. It's just kind of how it's going. Um, but the question becomes, you know, and the question that pops into many collectors and investors' heads is, well, when's the right time to sell, you know, or if it's gaining this much value, should I hold the card? Um, first, I want to go over, you know, you should ne it should never be looked down upon um, selling and locking in your return on investment on sports cards because at the end of the day, we need to know that, yeah, maybe you could have got, you know, a little bit more money, but who knows where the market is going. At the end of the day, something, you know, drastic can happen, just like the coronavirus, right? When the coronavirus hit, you know, there was a, you know, the market went down. Um, so nobody knows when that sort of stuff does happen. So locking in your return on investment is always the safest um, option at the, at the end of the day. Um, and it, it just should never look, look be looked down upon. Um, kind of my personal opinion on that. Um, I, I'm curious to know what to see what you guys think as well on that um by by selling your cards though here's the thing i see this a lot you know somebody buys a card for 50 bucks right um it's worth 150 bucks a month later um they don't sell it you know maybe they wait a couple more months and they sell it for 400 bucks well here's my thing let's say you buy for 50 you know you sell it for that 150 point Within those next couple months to when that card turns into a $400 card, you can do so much with that money. You could take that 150, 150 bucks, do one, two, three, four, five, six more deals with that within the months you would have waited. So if you waited a couple months, yeah, you would have got technically a better return on your investment on that one card. But within those several months, you could have done so many more deals. You could have turned that 150 into 250, then 350, then 700, then 900, then a grand. Um, and by the time that those several months hit, you know, instead of having just, you know, a couple hundred in your pocket, you would have had a thousand, maybe even 2000 in your pocket. You know, the, the, there's so many opportunities in the sports card world. There's so many good buys and deals out there that, you know, although at the end of the day, um, if you look at it by the book, yeah, holding your card will essentially um, benefit you. You know, there's so many deals you can do, in my personal opinion, that um, always buying and selling, you know, that's a good way to bring money in, get money going out and just seeing your money working for you instead of kind of holding it at one spot. But I want, I want to talk about this because this is a trend that I'm currently seeing. Um, you know, your LeBron rookie cards, your Kobe rookie cards, um, your MJ rookie cards, you know, these um, iconic figures um, in any sport, it doesn't have to just be basketball. I'm just using that as, as an example. Um, you know, those prices of those cards are getting um, more expensive and more expensive seemingly by the day. Um, so, you know, a lot of people who bought those cards even a month ago, a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, they they, they can cash out right now and have, you know, quite a, a huge return on investment, something that is almost unheard of, you know, something you wouldn't really be able to get in stocks or real estate. That's how crazy this market um, is getting. But what, what we're seeing with that as well is, you know, if you're going to sell that sort of card, that type of card, um, a card, as iconic as those guys, um, it will become tougher and tougher to reacquire that card. So let's say I have, you know, a Kobe, um, a Kobe Bryant Topps Chrome 138 rookie PSA 10, um, you know, not, not a ton of greeting. That card goes for $8,000 right now. Um, a lot of people bought that card just this summer for $1,000, you know, $1,500. If they sold right now, they're basically making an eight X return on their investment. But what my point is, all right, you sell that card for 8K. That's a great return. I would not blame anybody. I would, I mean, a 1,000 to 8K, man, take that all day. Um, but my, the point I'm trying to make is though, reacquiring that card. Let's say you want to buy that. Let's say you sell, sell the card for 8K a year from now, you want to go and, and buy that card again. That's going to be extremely tough to do. Um, as the market keeps on appreciating, keeps on appreciating, keeps on appreciating, um, you know, you only spent the thousand, fifteen hundred bucks on that card. Now you, 
you know, a year from now, that card could be, you know, a 16K card. So now you'd have to put 16K into that card instead of, you know, the mere thousand to 1500 bucks you put into it. So I think those iconic cards, um, you know, it just depends on the price point, you know, you got it at and, and you know, how your financial situation is. But I want to make the point that those cards are going to be really, really tough to reacquire eventually with if the market continues the way it is going. Um, it's just going to be really tough to reacquire those cards um, with how the market is trending. Um, so selling off those cards, you know, that's up to you at the end of the day. Um, but I wanted to make the point that, hey, guys, you know, these, you know, rookie cards of, of you know, potential all-stars, guys like that, you know, there's always opportunity to sell those cards, flip it. Um, you don't even have to hold it for too long. You just, you can, you can, you know, instead of waiting a couple months, like how I pointed out, you know, doing, waiting four months and maybe getting a little bit extra money, man, you can flip those things, keep working your money, keep working your money, keep working your money. Um, I think that's always going to be a little bit of a better option instead of, you know, holding it for a little bit longer to get just a little bit more on that specific card. Uh, now me personally, like, you know, there's guys that I really like that I don't mind holding. I don't mind holding Luka Doncic. I think he's going to be, um, and I think he's already shown that he's a top five player in the league. I think he's going to be, you know, in that realm of top, you know, 15 players all time. I really do. That's my personal opinion. So I'm okay with holding, you know, that sort of guy. Um, but I do buy and sell him, you know, as well. Um, but, you know, there's other guys, you know, uh, for example, uh, D'Angelo Russell, I'm high on, but I like buying and selling him. You know, I'm not always going to hoard him. You know, there's guys that I like to hoard and, and put away and stash. Um, but there's also, you know, cards that I'm flipping all the time, different types of variations, all that sort of stuff. So I wanted to make that point, um, you know, with the, um, you know, top tier players, you know, iconic cards and, and the ones that you're flipping. Um, I get the question a lot, when when should you buy, sell your sports cards? So I, I kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of what I'm kind of doing because everything I, I, I said, you know, that's kind of the the process I go through and, and what I essentially do. Um, again, guys, if you, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, don't take your return on investment. I always think the smart way to do it is take your return on investment, take the money, put it into the next deal um, or take it and, and move along. Um, but, um, you know, again, guys, with the LeBrons, with those Kobe's, with those Jordans, um, with how the market is, I think the Jordan sold for 95K, his Fleer PSA 10 yesterday through auction. I haven't looked into it to see if the person actually paid or whatsoever, but it was a 95K sale. Um, so, you know, somebody selling that card, it's going to be tough to reacquire it if they wanted to do so. Just wanted to make sure everybody was kind of aware on that. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys tuning in today. I appreciate you guys listening. Um, if you are watching on Spotify, you've got to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, it'll mean a ton. And if you're listening on Spotify, please follow me on there as well. I'll see you guys next time.